Hey, this is Bennett. I just wanted to briefly introduce this video. I got the opportunity to sit down with Jens Kruger last week um, before his show at Joe's Pub in New York City and he offered to play one of his tunes called Margarete that he wrote for his mother. And we also talked a lot about compositional process and just his overall concepts of composition on the banjo, which is really, really fascinating. This is part one, so it includes the song of the week, Margarete, and also um, just his concepts around this particular piece. If you want part two, you can sign up to become a BSM member, which is only $4.99 a month, and you get part two to this interview, um, exclusive interviews with Steve Martin, Mike Mumford, Ryan Cavanaugh, and many more soon to be announced. Plus, I have a bunch of lesson videos up there with guitar rhythm tracks, table edit files, just a ton of stuff to help you become a better banjo player. For more information, you can click right up here. Also, you can get the tab for this video completely free by signing up on my mailing list. The link is below this video. Thanks so much, and without further ado, here's Jens Kruger. I want to talk about a piece that I get a lot of requests for. It's called Margarete. Uh, this is the name of my mother. And um, I have a, a tab written out for it, so you can look at that as well. And I want to talk also about how it's composed. It's for actually for string quartet in the Kruger Brothers, but it doesn't really matter. I can I can show you what I, what I do with it. It is... Uh, the idea is to have a, a, a uniform pattern that repeats itself, and through that repeating of that pattern, I tie everything together. So I can use all kinds of chord patterns and things, so it becomes a unity of, 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 uh, in the composition. So it's a string of things. It's a very long bow. It's, uh, it's not a, a simple column answer. It is really an ongoing um, monologue. So in order to, to start this off, I have, uh, because of the contrary, I need a, in the composition, I always need a, a counter to what I, what, what I do. And because this is very simple, very beautiful, very, very uh, sort of profound, it's, I needed something that's a little uh, distressed, you know, for a little, a little um, yeah, just has a really different flavor, sort of, you know, a little bit more torn apart. I have, um, so I, I'm going to start off with that, I'm going to show you how I do that. Then the, the basic composition itself, uh, basic is in C, is in C, and what I use is a, is a, is a roll pattern that looks like that. Start off with the, with the middle finger, uh, so, and then index finger, so it's basically index, thumb, index, middle. I start with the middle finger, but I could start, of course, with the index finger. Going. I could also go... But I think it sounds better. It sounds a little rounder. So, and then I use a composition technique that was very prominent in the times of uh, Beethoven, which was we use uh, not uh, diminished uh, uh, chords maybe to transition from one chord to other really, or so we use common tone. So when I go from C, I just change one note and let the other notes stand and that t ties these notes together, ties the chord together. And then I change one note again, and then one note again, one note again, one note again. I tie the music together through the roll pattern that stays familiar and also with the notes that are not changing at once and that gives you a very liquid sort of feel of composition and the counter to that is slow so you can hear that
So let's get to the main part. slow because it's actually quite slow um, but I think it's interesting that the bow is actually very long it is it is um, like most bluegrass would be you know call answer really quick um, maybe a bit of false middle cadenza but this is a, a continuous continuous uh, composition and uh, makes it makes it a little more it makes it different it makes it like a concert music also you you maybe uh, realize saw that I not play in a metronomical sense, which is really intentional. I, I keep certain notes because I'm not making dance music, so there's no reason for me to stay in meter. Uh, so I, I, I can use the timing as an expression, 
um, uh, apart and and don't. It is easier when you, of course, play in a band when you have sort of an idea of a meter together. But when you live, when you play with a small ensemble, for instance, it is uh, great when you take the opportunity to use the meter because it it can create so much more tension and attention, you know, to what you do by not satisfying the meter. And um, and so it's a great tool, especially for slower for slower pieces, uh, to really have more depth in your music. Um, and then it it so so. There's a sim there's a few simple rules for for doing that. I think that's important. Maybe to if you have not experience with it, maybe that helps you. If you play, um, if you start off too slow and then get faster, the, the, you actually raise sort of an uh, you're pushing people a little bit away. This is like when you talk really slow and then talk louder. You're pushing people away, which if you want that, that's that's that is maybe used in certain. Uh, moments, but if you want to draw people into an atmosphere, you always start firm, not too loud, but firm, and then you start to back off. Like if I go, so you know that this note would come. But I, if I play it the other way around, it's more, ha it's a little bit more creepy because I'm doing things before you can actually think and, and you get overwhelmed. So to actually overwhelm people, it's a good way of doing that. But if you want people to actually have music in their head. Not only in their ear, uh, then you, it's important to to play it so it can happen in their ears. So when I go, see, so I'm taking it away. I'm not, I'm not. I, they know what's pretty much coming because we feel it. And if I then actually hold back, it starts to appear in people's minds. And not in their ear. So if I would do that the other way around, let's say if I do this like this, that would sound really eerie, uh, weird, because there's no inner music starting to happen. It's only it's a very unsatisfying feeling. So. So that was a long bow, a short bow would be that could, that could be a little bit too much. So you have to determine on the phrases how do you want them to be perceived and if you have too many ups and downs that can also come across as nervous. So, so just very slight changes actually make a big difference. Uh, if you let's say uh, if that would be completely straight, and you see you, you lose interest real quick. Um, so, so you make a note. There's an anticipation. Then you start working. Keep in that motion, I can actually uh, really make this piece get to the people and into their heads, and uh, that's very important for music like this uh, uh, to to look at it that way. Well, I, I hope this was helpful. Um, this part here, you know, if you can't play that, that's very difficult. You know, actually, to it took me a while. Uh, you know, sometimes you see people doing very complicated things, and um, and. It, you should know that we all have to practice a lot, you know, to be able to do that. So it's not something that where you're alone. So if you can't play that right away, maybe you just want to leave that away and just start with the other thing. The other nice thing about this is that if you have a pattern like that, you can also, you know, develop your own little ideas of how you could connect things, and and it's very beautiful. It's a nice process, you know, and don't have to always expect to come up with a great piece of music. It's just sort of nice to sort of develop and experience. So.